I'm Alex Nizek, and today I'm here with a car that Chevrolet wished we didn't have. This is the early review of the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. So this car is all about Chevrolet taking their electric vehicle game to the next level. And it promises all of the latest technology as far as an EV goes and an EV driving experience. And it delivers on it in many ways, but it's a little bit awkward. After we purchased our car, Chevrolet issued a stop sale, which means that they are no longer selling this car to the public. And they say it's for software reasons on the interior of the car. And we've experienced these issues ourselves. The screen will flash and go in and out. The gauge cluster shuts off while you're driving. And Chevrolet says it's not a safety issue, but at the very least, it's a distraction issue. And as of this recording, Chevrolet has not announced when they plan to restart sales of the Blazer EV. Stop sale aside, we have a Blazer EV. It's right here. And we've been really excited to finally get our hands on a GM Ultium based EV. It is a modular design with a lot of components that are shared across different vehicles, like the Silverado EV, the Hummer EV. And what's really interesting is eventually, this car will be sold in front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and all wheel drive like the version that we have here. We purchased a Blazer RS all wheel drive and it was the only version that we could get our hands on at this point. We got a couple of extras like the RS driver convenience and confidence package, which includes adaptive cruise control, head up display, and some other nice features. We spent $60,710, which includes a $1,395 destination charge. And we also paid 500 bucks for the shiny red paint. Our RS all wheel drive version comes with an 85 kilowatt hour battery and it can charge at a rate of 150 kilowatt at DC fast chargers. And according to the EPA, it's rated for 279 miles of range. Now, of course, these are just estimates from the EPA. We have a new exclusive 70 mile per hour highway range test for EVs, and the results will be in the final road test for the Blazer EV. Before we get inside, just look at this thing. I think it looks pretty sweet. It's low, it's wide, it looks modern, but it doesn't look too futuristic. And as far as size goes, it's about the size of the regular Blazer gas powered model, but it's just got a longer wheelbase. So what does the Blazer EV deliver on? First of all, it's one pedal driving system seems to be tuned really well, and it's really smooth in stop and go traffic. It also doesn't have a start button, which is pretty common with EVs. So I don't have to hit anything to drive the car. I just get in and essentially it's ready to drive. And because it has an 11 and a half kilowatt onboard charger, it can add miles pretty quickly when charging at home connected to a level two charger. We also love that it has regular door handles. So many EVs have pop out door handles and kind of a funky design, mostly for aerodynamics. And this is just straight straightforward, handles like you're used to. It also has a relatively large interior. That's the benefit of an EV platform and kind of stretching that wheelbase out is that you tend to get a lot more interior space for the same exterior size. So particularly in the rear, it's really spacious. And lastly, something that I personally really like is when you plug it in to charge it, the headlights and the taillights act like a progress bar to indicate date of charge of the battery. And you can really see from a distance whether the vehicle's charging or not. On the other hand, there are some areas where the Blazer EV doesn't really deliver and kind of gets a little frustrating day to day when you're living with the vehicle. First, it comes down to the interior storage places. The way that Chevrolet has kind of compartmentalized this center console just makes it a little difficult to use. There's this really narrow and deep slot at the front of the center console underneath the screen, and it's difficult to access and see what I've put in there. And then behind that, there's this frankly really large bin, but it's kind of shaped like a trash can where it's really deep. So you could fit a lot of stuff in there, but I think as things pile up, it's gonna be difficult to access and get things out. On top of that, if you plug in a cord into the USB ports that are in here, you can no longer close the lid of the bin because it hits the cord where it's plugged in. So that's pretty silly. Now moving back on the center console, it does have a pretty large bin here underneath the armrest, but this armrest is massive. And I actually have to turn my body to the side just to close this thing. That's a little annoying. Now, the saving grace of this area is the wireless charger for the phone is actually really nice. It's in a great spot right by my leg. I can access it easily, and I'm not gonna forget that my phone is there. Now, there are other areas of the Blazer EV that we're very much still investigating, and we can't ignore the fact that there are these two giant displays in front of me in this car. And one of the big things with this system is that Chevrolet decided to completely ditch Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And in its place is integrated Google services like Google Maps and Google Assistant. Got it. There's Electrify America charging station 15 miles away. 
And if you're anything like me, especially with screens of this size, when I'm driving at night, I want to lower the brightness to the point where I can still read it, but it's not shining in my face. And when you do that in this car, the screens just kind of get grayed out and washed out and they start to not look so high quality when you do that. So that's pretty disappointing. There are some other positives and negatives so far with using this system, but like always, we will do a full usability analysis. So check back with us for those results. So that's the first look of the Chevrolet Blazer EV, and we're really excited to fully test the first GM Ultium vehicle that we've gotten our hands on. For our final road test report and other information on the Blazer EV, head to CR.org.